Welcome back to Fabulous Creations. I'm Ron, and in this video we're going to review some awards I was asked to make by my 9 to 5 for our year-end 2019 celebration. When I'm not making custom wedding signs or laser etching custom baby blocks, I spend my weekdays as a senior web developer at Drip. Now there's a lot of industry-specific lingo in our space like SaaS and MarTech, so to describe Drip briefly without any of that jargon, Drip is a platform that allows you to send relevant and targeted emails to your customers if you sell just about anything online. One of our internal cultural symbols at Drip is the OR, with the idea that members of Olympic rowing teams need to be 100% in sync with one another and really give it their all to compete in such a high endurance sport. As such, comparing the competitive field we're in to that of Olympic rowing makes a lot of sense, hence the OR. Last year, our leadership team decided they wanted to start the annual tradition of presenting an award to a group of employees that had worked on a big high impact project during the course of that year, and they wanted that award to be a physical OR itself. They asked me if I could help out with the project by laser etching artwork onto an ore that they supplied me. I was glad to help out with the project and it turned out great, but I wasn't making videos last year. But I am now, so when they asked me if I could help out again this year, I was eager to show off the process. So with that big ol' intro out of the way, let's jump on in. To get started, I had the ever so slightly tedious task of enveloping the ores in painter's tape. I would eventually be painting the inner portions of the etched designs with black spray paint, so applying the tape before etching would allow me to paint through the tape while preventing overspraying on other areas that wouldn't be etched. This isn't something I normally bother with when I laser etch wood for a few different reasons. For one, I normally don't paint the inner portion of etched designs at all because I'm usually working with a piece that's a single species of wood. As you can see, these ores are made of what looks to be maple and cherry, and the two different colors will also be two different levels of darkness once it's etched. So to make the design look cohesive, we'll want to paint it. The other reason I'm taping the ores up is because these are pre-finished with shellac. When the wood is unfinished, you can just sand off the areas that got a touch of overspray before applying a final finish. But since these already have a clear coat, I want to protect that finish as much as possible. Oh, and since we have two different offices that drip, I had two identical ores to tape up, etch, and paint. After both ores were entirely taped, I could set the laser up for the etchings. The laser here at the makerspace I attend is on the larger side when it comes to lasers. Its cutting bed is 36 inches wide by 24 inches tall. While that is indeed large, these ores were even larger. So when I did these for the first time last year, I had to get a little creative with how I went about the etchings. The laser has a sensor on the door to make sure that the lid is closed while etching to protect you from the beam should something go terribly wrong. I don't know what the exact threshold is, but I discovered that as long as the door is within one inch or so of being completely closed, the laser thinks it's closed and will fire normally. Luckily, the handle of the ores is about that thick, so I could simply hang the ore out the front of the machine and do the etching like this in two separate parts. Now because of the non-standard shape of the ores, and because this older laser doesn't have internal cameras to help with alignment like newer systems do, I placed a piece of cardboard down on the cutting bed so that I could draw myself a guide roughly the shape of the ore. Apparently there is some variation in these ores at the company who produces them, because this is the exact same ore we ordered last year, and yet this one was larger than my template from last year. Realizing this, I redrew my template with the larger dimensions keyed in. Before etching, I had one more step to ensure a successful etching. The ore is naturally wobbly due to its shape in the z-axis. To help compensate for this, I weighed down the handle with a brick and used pieces of metal underneath to help act as shims and support the head. Then it was time for everyone's favorite part, the lasering itself. I upped the resolution to around double what I normally do since there were some fine details in the design and I wanted to make sure they weren't pixelated. Despite the increased resolution, even with this being a larger design, the laser made pretty quick work of it because the design is so narrow on the x-axis. After the laser had done all the hard work, I was able to inspect the etching. It came out great and I was quite pleased. You can see, however, why I think infilling the etching with paint is necessary, since the portion towards the middle of the design is darker than the outside parts due to it being a different species of wood. Painting the etching will prevent that from being a distraction in the end product. But before I could get to the painting, I had to etch the handle too, so I again drew myself a placement guide in the approximate shape of the ore's handle and then placed the ore down and again weighed it down. This design finished much quicker as it was simply the drip logo along with the year. After the blade grip and shaft were all etched, it was finally time for the paint. Now I mentioned earlier that these were pre-finished with shellac. I know this due to my experience with last year's ores. Much to my horror, some spray paint was able to leak underneath my tape in a few places and I thought sure I was going to have to sand and refinish, or at the very least, use mineral spirits to clean up the paint and then touch up the finish. 
Much to my delight, however, Mineral Spirits took the oversprayed paint right away and didn't damage the finish at all. I discovered later that this was because the ores were finished in shellac, which is sensitive to alcohol, but not to Mineral Spirits. But that was last year, and I wanted to test to make sure that was still true. So before painting the etching, I placed a small dab of paint on the back of the ore's handle to see if Mineral Spirits again removed the paint without harming the finish, just in case I had to clean any paint off the front again too. Much to my delight, the finish again held its sheen without any issue. So, it was time to get painting. Now I normally make sure to wear proper breathing protection when I'm spraying finishes and the like, but the spray room at the Makerspace has really good ventilation and basically replaces the air in the room every few minutes or so, so I wasn't overly concerned here. Plus, I may have forgot my mask at home. Once the paint was dry, it was time for one of my least favorite parts of working with taped off designs dealing with all the itsy bitsy pieces of tape that stay behind in letters with holes in them. I believe vinyl cutter folks call this process weeding. Well, I don't like weeding in the garden, and I don't like it here either. But it was worth it, because as you can see, the paint helped make the design a single cohesive color that really popped above the light colored wood that it was etched on. And just like last year, I did have a bit of paint leak underneath the tape and make the whole thing look a little sloppy. But luckily, a paper towel dampened with those mineral spirits and a little elbow grease made quick work of it and cleaned the paint right off. And that was that. With the ores all finished up, I could put them back in the box and take them back to Drip HQ in preparation for my teammates to be recognized for their hard work on this year's Shopify App Store launch. Great work, you guys. So, there you have it. Now I know laser etching an ore isn't a super common project or use case, but it's nice to have those types of projects thrown at me once in a while as an exercise in problem solving. I'm really glad I was able to figure out that the laser would still fire with the door slightly ajar because my backup plan was originally going to involve cutting the ores in half and then repair them after the fact, something I was really hoping to avoid if possible. So if you like watching me laser at something a little atypical once in a while, be sure to subscribe so you catch the next time I release a video. I really appreciate your support and thank you for watching. Until next time, cheers.